Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ift. If you're listening to this on iTunes, thank you. Just drop by and, uh, you know, give us a little review on iTunes. They're the charts that everybody cares about. We're a top 50 show. Every once in a while, we dance a little higher. Uh, I'd like to be a top 10 show. It helps with you guys. All you got to do is if you give a review and give it a five stars and rate, review, comment, just be really nice about the show. And guess what? We start moving up. Number two, if you're not listening to the show and you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe, send it to your friends, tell people at your gym. Go to the whiteboard at your gym if you're in session or whatever it is, if you guys are working remotely. Just be like, hey guys, listen to the Wadcast podcast. It's a great show. I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, We talk a lot of CrossFit, a lot of health fitness. Today we have an amazing episode with Sam Dancer. Sam Dancer, who's been four times to the games, three as a team, one as an individual, grid league. Just an awesome dude. Really, really interesting show. The guy was about to give birth in the middle of the show. Well, he wasn't. His wife was, but it's still, I couldn't believe he did the show. His, His wife was actually having contractions while we did this episode. Uh, Fun, 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 fun episode. Like, I really enjoyed this one. I could have talked to him for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes I get bored. Sometimes I look at the clock. I'm not going to lie to you. And then I blame myself for not doing a good show. But this one was so easy to do because Sam was so easy to talk to. Uh, I really want you guys to start watching the show on YouTube because once COVID's over, uh, I'm going to start doing some workout stuff and doing some real interesting stuff with some interesting people on this show. I'm also going to start doing, people love the Hunter and Bobby episodes. So I have this concept called 30, 40, 50. Hunter's in his 30s. I'm in my 40s. Bobby in his 50s. Bunch of guys trying to stay fit, trying to stay healthy. Maybe we'll add some women eventually. Uh, But it's just the three of us. And it's like, uh, I don't know, you know, I'm a big fan of the Joe Rogan show. Joe's kind of in a weird way, been a mentor to me and also just someone I look up to and follow. And uh, he's been successful as a comedian and also as a podcaster. And he does fight companion shows. Well, I don't I, I don't want to do I'm, I'm not like Armin. I don't know the CrossFit games well enough, but uh, I do know uh, that I have a good chemistry with these guys. And I think every once in a while we could sit down and do an episode. Uh, they're both very knowledgeable and uh you know, you need me there to come keep some semblance of order or the next thing, you know, it'll just be a Buffalo testicles festival. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to every once in a while, we'll just do instead of a regular episode of the podcast, we'll do a 30, 40, 50. And, um, tell me if you like that idea. I'm always looking to ways to change the show, spice it up and, uh, check out YouTube. Enjoy my long hair that, uh, I'm going to have to cut off. My wife's go losing her mind on me. Uh, because of this, we said to do a family photo and I looked like this and even the photographer is like, why are you here? I was like, this is my family. He's like, you're ruining their photo. And I was like, okay. Uh, so, uh, people that have helped this show, I just want to thank you for keeping it going, especially during the pandemic. Times are tough. I am not doing stand up comedy presently. Don't know when I will. I just booked some dates in January. Hopefully, you know, this virus, like Trump says, just goes away one day, like a miracle. Uh, but I am not doing shows. So uh, I am subsisting completely on this show. So if you guys want to help out, I will help you out. You will get yourself, if you donate at least $5 and stay donating, come on. Five dollars, you get yourself a Maya Pucks. Do you see this? If you're watching YouTube, you can see it. It's an electronic muscle stimulator. It is incredible. I use it all the time. I have a friend who just hurt his back, and I gave him another one of mine that he has to use. I gave him a Theragun and a Maya Pucks, and I said, "Get to work, fix this shit." As they say at uh, Move You, fix yo shit. Um, it's um, it's for muscle recovery. Uh, muscle recovery. Recovery. I just made a new word. That's how they do it at McDonald's. Uh, it's uh, it's an electronic muscle stimulator. It pumps your muscles and actually brings blood flow to any injured or uh, tissue that needs repaired. I, I don't want to get all into the science of it. Let me just tell you, it works. It really, 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 really works. There's a reason all the best physical therapists, chiropractors, everybody use these things. Well, now you can have one at home. It's remote. It's it's the smallest, most portable, most effective one there is. It's called Myopucks. We also have a thing called the Leopard Claw. 
And this is uh, Troy over there at Leopard Claw gave me a big thing to read. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell you this is stuff that you use and you, you scrape and you find, you locate. He gave me this whole thing. There's there's tons of videos on it. Just Google Leopard Claw and you can see it. You can, you can locate and you find the like gristly stuff and then you work again. It's good to put the foam on first. There's all this foam that you, you put on to make it lubed up and then you, and then you scrape and you get rid of all the like, I can just feel some gristly, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh, I feel stuff that just needs to, as Kelly, Kelly Strett says, become a supple leopard. And you want to make your tissue supple so it glides easily. And uh, you want to, you know, get all the gunk and junk out of your fascia. So um, you give $5 to our Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast or wadcastpodcast.com slash Patreon. I believe that's what it is. Um just five bucks. We'll take care of you. If you haven't received yours, please send an email to wadcastpodcast.com. We are making sure no one slipped through the cracks. If you've slipped through the cracks, we want to know it and make sure we get yours out to you as soon as possible. So there's a winner every single week. And this week's winner is... Drum roll, please. Daniel Coda. You're the winner. Come on down to the Price is Right. Uh, do you remember that thing on the Price is Right that went did 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 or the Wheel of Fortune? They had it on both. Something about wheels. We like the wheel. Well, Daniel Cody, you're our winner. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. Thank all of you guys for supporting. Uh, if you haven't gotten yours, you will. If you've slipped through the cracks, let me know. Send me an email. Podcast podcast. Yahoo.com. Who uses Yahoo? I don't know, people in their 40s, Hotmail, 30s, Gmail, 20s, iCloud, under 20, AOL, 50s, you're getting up there. Um, okay, here's the deal, everybody. We're going to get to this episode. I might have a really special episode before the games with some really special guests if it works out. So stay tuned, listen, uh, check out our Facebook page, our Instagram page. Uh, we're going to build the show. The show's going to become the biggest, baddest thing in the fitness world. Okay? Yeah. So um, enjoy this episode with Sam Dancer. All right, we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. We're I like here. how you get right into it. I, 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 I have a policy, SIFTA, save it for the air. A comedian years ago, Craig Shoemaker, told me that. He goes, the best shit happens before. Every time. And so I just, I don't want anything to be said. Uh, <laughs> the second best shit happens after the show. It's sometimes the best stuff. It's yes, like, I, like, but it's I've all learned, this. It's uh, all, I'm sorry to interrupt. I've, I've learned to just leave it recording. <laughs> Like, <laughs> even after I take like headsets off, I just, just in case, and it sometimes it sounds really muffled and it like, it sounds like people are far away, but there's still some really golden pieces that are, are well, worth recording. Well, so I feel, to- I feel guilty because I feel like there's a lot of stuff. Sometimes we talk about that's like off the record or, and, or everything here is on the record. And then there's stuff you want to say off the record. So yeah. I have to say to the people and I have to like, you know, it's like my integrity. I got to turn everything off because there is shit that I have said in radio rooms. And, you know, when I do promotion for my comedy and stuff, like after the show, I'll tell them stuff that they're like, are you serious? And you're like, yeah, you can say it. But, y- you know, like you can't say I told you or uh, that kind of stuff that like off the record kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I don't want to ever put anyone in that situation, but that's where you hear the best shit, man. Well, we'll see what you got, man. Yeah. So how you been? You, I've been really, really good. Um, we're having a, a baby. Soon, oh, congratulations. So, yeah. I'm pretty stoked on that. So you had Jenny's, sex. Yeah, we had, we it's dude, it's been wild. We've actually had more sex than ever. Like it, it, it becomes more and more the more we've been married. Well, uh, I wish I could say that mine was like, <laughs> mine was like baby making sex. It was kind of creepy. My wife was like, like get in here now. <laughs> yeah. I'm ovulating. Get in here. And I felt like I was just like, 
I, I told, I, I used to have a bit on stage. My, my wife had an app on her phone that would say when she was fertile and an alarm would go off. <laughs> and, and she had it set the most ominous sound on the iPhone. The, the, it was the, uh, the foghorn ringtone. And I'd just oh, be like, man. I'd just be like on my phone playing and all of a sudden I hear wah, wah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no. Uh, and I loved sex. I loved sex when I didn't have to have sex. When I, I had to have it. sex. You know what that's called? That's that's rape. And, that is. and and I would hear her rape app go off and I'd be like, "Oh my god. Oh my god." And and it was honestly the first time in my life I didn't want to have sex cuz I would hear oh. it and it was like, "Wah wah." And I'm like, eh. it was so well, mechanical. I I've never we never tried to have a kid. So but I do understand that because my wife has acted kind of rapey. Yeah. And and um i know that feeling and um <laughs> yeah so, cuz their 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 hormones are just going off and they're like need sperm now and yeah. and you're the provider of that and look the outcome it's it, it, look m- my wife would force me into it and i'm not going to say i didn't enjoy it but the the, <laughs> the outcome's unbelievable when you, it's just it starts off kind of scary when it's when it's uh, the forceful kind of rapey, you're like, uh, yeah, like, yeah. like oh, I don't want to. Well, and, there's like, then, there's, there's this performance aspect of it of not like, Hey, make me feel good. It's like, you better put a good load in here that makes a baby. <laughs> and you're like, I, I don't, I don't know how my body's doing right now. I don't know if it's, and it took us, I don't know about four or five months. And I don't, you know, I know some people have, uh, there's a lot of people out there that have trouble getting pregnant and, I yeah. thought it would just happen automatically, but what was weird my whole life, uh, I was always trying not to make a baby. And then when I went to make a baby, I was like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know how to do that. Like I'm, I'm good at pulling out. I'm the not timings. At- the timing's incredible. Yeah. Right. Like when you really like when people actually start trying to have children and you realize that there's such a small window yeah. to actually get pregnant when you hear of other people like accidentally getting pregnant, you're like, how'd you do that? <laughs> How? <laughs> like this, everything lined up perfectly for, for that to happen. There's like, you're, I mean, sometimes it's, it's hours that you have of time. I knew a girl in college who had sex with, who got pregnant twice in college and she had abortions both times. And she had sex with two different guys that both used condoms and she got pregnant from both of them. And I was like, you're supposed to have a baby. Like you, your, your body eats through condoms going, give me baby, (laughs) me one baby. (laughs) (laughs) Like the second time it happened, she's like, I'm getting an abortion. I'm like, I don't don't think you should. I think, I think your body's going to like create a baby. If you, yeah, it's one way or another. Yeah. You're, your body's going to find a way to be pregnant. Do you know what you're having? Uh, we're having a girl. Oh, the best. And I'm saying that because I have one of each. Oh, nice, man. I um, love my daughter. My son, if anybody wants one, uh, I'll give you my email. Uh, <laughs> no, he's he's awesome. But, like, girls are just, when they're young, they're so, uh, she's just an angel. I just love having oh, a girl. Oh, man, that's so cool. I wanted a boy. Uh, I wanted a boy. But when I got a girl... I was like, okay, this is what I got. And I can't believe how much I love that little girl. I can tell. I, I, I get that too, because like when it was, when we didn't know and it was like, Hey, what do you think it's going to be? I was, and like, I never really thought like I, I didn't want, I shouldn't say I didn't want, I never anticipating having either. Like yeah. we never really thought we would have kids. Um, and then, so when we found, found out we were pregnant, it was like, what do you think it's going to be? It was like, well, I think that's when it kind of passive aggressively, my desire to have a boy came out. Cause I'm like, it's going to be a boy. That's natural. They say yeah. it's innate in humans to, uh, men, men want boys, women want girls. Cause we naturally want what looks like us. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, it's uh good luck. It's, um, thanks man. In my opinion, we're, the first one's easy. The second one we're is really, ex- we're so excited about well, it. How it's- long? When's it do? Uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. Shut up. Yeah. Are you, you're not kidding. I'm not one bit. Wait, like <laughs> you're going to, 
Like you could stop the show right now and run off because you got to go have a baby. Probably, but or I could, but I don't think that's going to happen. Her water broke earlier today. Her what? contractions are, are are pretty spaced out, and so I I'm thinking it's either going to be later tonight or early this morning. This is hysterical. Early, you're early talking to me right now as you're about to have a baby. Yeah, soon. I'm gonna. We're driving over to uh, across the river to a friend's house to uh, deliver it. Are you doing a natural, like in a baby pool kind of thing? Yeah, home home delivery. We have a, a midwife, well, yeah. a couple midwives, and uh, a doula who's just yeah. kind of like, yeah, more or less like your assistant your mindset, like breathing coach kind of. And um, if it all goes well, hopefully I'm gonna catch catch a baby within wow. the next like probably 24 hours. Wow! Oh my god, my wife's such a prima donna. We had a doula, and she got a C-section. <laughs> it was like it was like why is this lady here i have no idea why am i paying for this um i commend anyone who does the natural childbirth i mean that is uh and your wife's a crossfitter though so yeah she's uh she's one of the toughest chicks i know man so and, she's gonna um, like she's gonna like pop that out and then do some squats right after it'll be like <laughs> we've definitely toned it down a notch like she's you know relax quite a bit comparatively to what the standard narrative is that kind of like encapsulates uh jennifer nobis this like just hard working go getting non-stop like train all day and that person has been kind of right you know, we we kind of put her to the side a little bit and she's and she's a little older too like she's pretty banged up just from all our years of professional soccer and then going right into CrossFit. And, and so that, she's 36 years old and, uh, she's done a great job probably pretty much by like midway through the second trimester. She was just kind of walking, cycling, stretching, right. doing her breathing exercises and stuff and some bodybuilding and such, but she's been pretty chill. She wasn't doing Fran. She was, she wasn't doing Fran, honestly. And even when she like pretty much by 2018, she was pretty like over competing. And right. She's just tired. And she was tired after she finished up soccer when she was 30. Do you she know Martina, ready. Martina Paradiso over at uh, Par Paradiso CrossFit in Venice? Are you familiar um, with her at all? Not like we're not like super friends right. or haven't, haven't been like introduced to each other. I, th I, th I think she did like Murph the day her kid was born. <laughs> yeah. I, and I got some friends who are young, like some girlfriends who are in like their mid twenties and such. And, you know, they were doing this and doing that. And, and, uh, I, yeah. but, and, and maybe if Jen would have got pregnant when she was 30 years old or, 25 or something like that. Right. She may have very well been one of those yeah. crazy ladies. Um, she's just, yeah, she's, she's, she's banged up, man. Yeah. She's had, I, I still she had three knee surgeries before she even started her CrossFit career. Oh, so like her completely separated shoulder. Um, she looks like she played rugby. Yeah. Like scars all over her knees. And like I said, that her shoulder sticks out and this completely Attached, I think so. this little baby's going to be pretty tough. I think she's going to like handstand push up right out. You know, she's wow, going to be it, like, I'm maybe. ready. Yeah, I think, I think women that CrossFit, this is just a generalization. Women that CrossFit, I really think, and people can call me out on this and come at me, but I think they have an easier time in childbirth than women that don't. And That's interesting you say that. Because every woman I know that is like, maintain some level of fitness through their pregnancy. And I look, I'm talking as a guy. I don't know what it's like. I don't know how pain it looks awful. I'm not saying I could do it. I commend women. I want to like, cause I know it's like the one thing you don't fuck with. I, I <laughs> and, but I do want to say that women that do it, I think there has something to do with the toughness, like the mental toughness, the physical toughness, uh, that their bodies are healthier, that they not only have an easier childbirth. And I know there's going to be like some woman like, fuck you. How dare you? You don't know what I went through. I was in labor for seven days and, and I lost my arm and my leg in the process. Yeah. And now I have, I, I drool and you know, like I'm, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry for the, I'm generally speaking, but the women bounce back faster too. My, um, my fit friends, we just, it's funny you talk about this because we were literally, Jen and I were just talking about it like last night. All of our fit friends have very positive things to say. They're like, you'll do great. It's yes, it's tough, but you're going to, you're going to do awesome. And all of our not fit friends tell us it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. The worst experience yeah. ever. Like the most gory, horrific, like worst experience, full on worst experience of their life. All of our unfit friends. And then our hippie friends who are, they're kind of, they're kind of similar to our fit friends. Um, they also have very, you know, very positive things to say. So I'm, I'm right there with you, man. The, it sounds like fit people just, and maybe it's a mindset. Maybe it's a physical thing. I'm not totally sure. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Um, but across the board, all of our fit friends have great fit and hippie friends have great things to say. Our people, our friends who don't like work out and, you know, have, I don't know what the, to- the total comparison is. Like, what is it that they're actually missing? Is it the fact that they're, they're not eating well, or is it the fact that they don't sleep or is it the fact that they don't really train or is it just their negative mindset? I'm not totally sure. Is it all of it? What exactly it is. I'm, I'm going to probably find out tonight or tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. The fit people say, well, I, great experience. I'd like to say I'm fit. Uh, it was a nightmare of an experience for me. Because I'm a neurotic fucker and I just worried about my wife the whole way through. My wife got a C-section, so it was like total recall. You know, they just like cut her stomach open and rip a baby out of her stomach. And I'm just like watching this. No, it was, uh, she was too posh to push. So she was just like, I'm not, that's not coming out there. She's like, let's, let's get this, like open it up, zipper it shut. And uh, I really wanted them to put a zipper in there because we're like, we're going to have two kids. Just close it up temporarily. We'll open it back (laughs) up the second time. But the baby came out and it was just like, I'm looking at the baby and I'm like, oh, my God, that's gross. You know, like (laughs) like there's just goo and stuff all over it and it doesn't look the color of it doesn't look right. Then I happen to look over my shoulder at my wife and her guts are like up on her tits and like they've like emptied out her insides and they're packing it back in and i was just like and i'm not i don't mind gore i actually kind of like gore i can like i i was a ski patrol and i like the goriest accidents i can get on this because it was my wife freaked me out i was like that's my wife put her back together and they're like here's your new baby i'm like i don't know that baby i know my (laughs) wife like help her like help her and i was like we could have another one of those i can't make another wife no so um i'm cu- i'm curious um i'm i'm kind of getting the answer that i'm looking for based off of that response but um everyone tells me that as soon as your child comes out you don't realize that you could love something so much but that's the way i feel about my wife and me it too it sounds like very similar to you, like the bait, like I heard that a lot. I heard like, Oh my God, it's the most love you'll ever feel in your life. Didn't it? Wasn't it the most love? Didn't you just love that baby so much? And I'm like, I didn't know that baby. I'd never met that baby (laughs) before. It was a total stranger. Like the doctor tried to give it to me and I was like, stranger danger. I don't know this kid yet. Like you take care of that for a little bit, like put it on the, put it on the oven for a little bit. And then I'll, I wanted to deal with my wife. So I, I actually left the baby in, I don't know, I put it on the couch or no, they put it, you know, like the nurses have it. <laughs> I went over to my wife because I was so worried about her Yeah. and I was like, I'll let the nurses do what they do with the baby. I'm, I've never had a baby before. I don't know what to do right now. I'll probably yeah. fuck that up. So I do know my wife and I know she's in extreme stress right now. So I want to comfort her. So that's what I did the first time. The yeah. second time I was like, later, day. Lauren, have fun. I got a boy. <laughs> and I was like, hey, he's got a penis. And uh, it was, it, it, it's a complete, um, the second time's completely different. Um, yeah. It, it, both ways. But the second time's like, you know, like when you get a root canal, the first time you're like, 
oh, that wasn't that bad because I didn't know what was coming. The second time you're like, oh, I know, I know, I know it's coming. And it was a little like, oh God, I got to do this all again. (laughs) But, but like, look, now it's the truth. I love those kids more than anything in the entire world. And it is, you know, like, but people say, wasn't that day your child was born? Wasn't that the greatest day of your life? And I'm like, I had a threesome once with two strippers from Spearmint Rhino in Las Vegas. That's, that's a pretty good day. I, I yeah. mean, like anybody can have a baby. How many guys can get a threesome? Can pull that off. Yeah. So I'm going to be honest. That wasn't the greatest day of my life, but for you, um, I have owned every kind of sunglass there is. I am a sunglass connoisseur. Growing up, I always had the hottest, best sunglasses from the Oakley Frog Skins to the Ray-Ban Aviators. And uh, none of them were the perfect sunglasses. Uh, Some of them just broke or some of them were too expensive and got stolen. I finally found the best sunglasses for someone like me who's someone like you. Uh, Someone that likes to do sports, likes to work out, likes to run a lot likes to uh, not lose a really expensive piece of, uh, of sunglasses that aren't worth that because they don't there's no reason for it. Uh, these sunglasses are probably the gooderest sunglasses there are. What? Did I say gooderest? That's not a word. I mean gooder. Yeah, that's not a word either. Yes, it is. It's the name of these sunglasses gooder G O O D R. They are the they are they're better than good. They're gooder. They are amazing because they come in so many different colors. Uh, you can be just Mr. Conservative and the Tom Cruise risky business look, you know, the typical Wayfair, you know, just black on black. I wear those sometimes, you know, and I'm just trying to be cash. And then I might bump it up and I put on my orange ones with the blue lens when I'm trying to get funky. And then I wear my, I have some clear ones that I wear uh, when I go mountain biking just to keep sticks and things out of my eyes. I just uh, had to wear, I got a brand new helmet. I got a uh, Troy Lee design helmet, which is like the best helmet there is. And I was like, oh, are my glasses going to fit? Boom. Perfect. So I'm like safe. I'm protected now. Um, these glasses uh, won the Runner's World Gear of the Year award because they're so good. They're not going to slip off because they've got this like rubber matting kind of like finish. And they're just so good. So if you're sweating, doesn't matter. They're staying on. You watch the CrossFit Games, watch all the pros. They all wear sunglasses when they're outside. When you work out outside a lot, put them on. The sun is damaging the, uh, the eyes. These are polarized. I would wear them surfing if I wouldn't look like a kook. No one surfs with sunglasses on. But I'm like, I want to. And they're almost cheap enough that uh, I could lose them. I don't want to lose them because they're not that inexpensive. But they are not like, you know, like you buy a pair of cheap sunglasses and you're like oh these are no these are built just as well they feel it you can tell you know when you you can pick up a pair of sunglasses these guys just that made them figured out that there was just there were there was a lot of money being made that the margins were gigantic and they were like hey we can still make some profit and make some good sunglasses um so they've made what i think are the best sunglasses out there they're gooder they are so gooder they're not going to slip you're going to be able to work out with them uh, they're not going to guarantee you're going to run faster, but they will guarantee you will look better. You will uh, come on. Let's be honest. Running's dorky. Put some sunglasses on. You look cool, man. Um, they've got free U.S. standard shipping at fifty dollars. They've got a thirty day free returns. So they got a one year warranty. They're one hundred percent carbon neutral, and uh, like I said, they're award winning. And they, uh, you're just going to look damn good. And you know what? They're going to give you 17% off. There's so many different varieties. Go to their website. Just look at them. And you you can tell. You can tell just looking at the website how cool they are. And you'll want to order some right away. So go to their website. Don't just go to gooder.com. Go to gooder.com slash wadcast. Because then when you check out, you're going to get 17% off. That's gooder.com slash wadcast. 17% off. Look, I'm going to put it up there with like a win in the grid league. <laughs> does, does that even exist anymore? I think they still do it like for fun, maybe. But they do it in like Florida. Yeah, it, people are all about it. I think it's like it might be a thing maybe in over like uh, 
Colombia or like Brazil and stuff like that. I think I it's cool as shit. At first, I thought it was a joke, and now I watch it and I'm like, oh, "This is cool." Yeah, it's it was it was really fun. I had a great time doing it. It was hard on the body. Was it? Yeah, it was pretty tough. Like, but I don't think it was sustainable as as at least as a bigger athlete, it wasn't. Weren't you like a specialist though? Like, weren't they bringing you in to do all the heavy shit? Yeah. So they'd yeah. be like, "All right, just lift that up as heavy." So you were doing like one rep maxes a lot. It was more like touch and go stuff, just like Ooh. a ton of shoulder to overhead and like a ton of cleans or a ton of front squats or something like that. Um, and just, I remember my elbows. Oh just yeah. Like I couldn't like, it was, yeah, it was rigorous, man. So nobody, um, nobody talks about elbows enough. I have elbow injuries all the time. I broke this one. I have tendon tendinosis in this one. And I feel like it all came from, I'm not going to blame CrossFit, but I'm going to blame overtraining yeah. on, my own, on my yeah. own and nobody talks about elbows, but they're basically the knees of your arms <laughs> and, and you need them. You need them a lot. And yeah. mine are fucked. Like I have great knees, but fucked up elbows. Yeah. That's, that's not fun, man. And it, you're right. It does come from just like, and like I said, and you said it too, uh, as a specialist, you're, you're doing one thing over and over and over and over again. And like, that's just, it's, it's where it's when injuries happen is when you do repetitive, you know, things like that. So did you, I, um, I posted a video on the Wadcast site of, I don't know where I found it, but it was, uh, might've been funning on Instagram, but, uh, it was from the grid league in Florida and they're doing like toes to bar oh wait toes to bar to muscle up i think it's like a toe to bar chest to a bar. toe to bar chest to bar that's it toe to bar and then chest. a muscle up yeah yeah and, and they're fast. doing it really fast yes <laughs> but you see that and then you see what they're doing in the games and you're like in relation you're like oh these guys are pussies in the games <laughs> like like and i know they're not i know but i'm like these guys have taken it to the next level there. Yeah. And I get it. It's almost like the games is the NBA. These guys are the Harlem globe trotters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, like they've learned all these like stunt stunt yep. moves that are like, yep. my wife's always like, so irritated whenever I like show her like a video of some like soccer girl, like juggling all cool. I'm like, yo, Jenny, check this out. And she's like, she probably sucks at soccer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's usually, it's usually the way it is. It's like the, uh, the people who can do the, uh, what did Armin used to call them? Party tricks or whatever. Like the, yeah. cro the CrossFit party tricks. They look that's great. What the grid, that's what the grid league is. It's just like everyone in their party tricks. But I like the specialization because I feel like, uh, I feel like CrossFit's the decathlon and like the CrossFit games is a decathlon. And when we all watch the Olympics, nobody gives a shit about the decathlon. Like at the end of the day, you're like, who won it? Yeah. Because you don't want to see a guy who runs an average hundred, an average yeah. mile, an average pole vault. We want to see the spectacle. We want to yeah. see. So I want to see the guy that's going to go in and deadlift more than anyone's ever deadlift. I yeah. want to see the guy that's going to be able to do this. So I get CrossFit is fitness. It's a combination of all of these things, but I don't know. It's like, it's like track and field. Nobody gives a shit yeah. about the decathlon. I agree, and I agree with you, man, the, the team aspect of it. And it would have been cool to see it develop further down the line and, and where you might have, I don't know if you remember, um, who is that big time, uh, Klokov. Yeah. Klokov. Remember? Yeah. He the was Russian. like in the league. Like it would have been cool to see like teams start getting the best weightlifters and the best power lifters and like some top level gymnasts. And, yeah. Yeah. And, um, it would be really fun to watch all those people just <laughs> crush it, man. So, we had, we had, we had cloak off on the show. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think I was, I wasn't there that episode. And, uh, we had a, a bunch of the Russians at like the top Olympic weightlifting Russians. Mm, cool. And, uh, before the show, Scott or Armin asked, is there anything you guys don't want to talk about? And they're like, yes, do not ask about steroids. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I was so upset when I heard it. I'm like, that's all we want to hear about. 
that's it. That's the only thing we want to talk to you about. Like, what do you do? How often? What? How? What amount? What? What's the? Uh, you know, the, do not discuss the steroids. And we're like, oh, okay. Um, so I don't. That's think funny. They... Whenever, whenever I go to like Brazil and do a seminar, ev like without fail every time. And I've done a handful of them too. At the end of the seminar, they'll come up and be like, "So, what special supplements do you take?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Special." I'm like, everything I covered in the seminar is exactly what I do, and they're like, "But the." special supplement. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Um, nah, bro. Like, I'm sure some people do it maybe, but like, I, I don't know where to, where to point you. Like just drink the filtered water, you know, take these supplements. And that's like, that's what I've done. So they, um, uh, Brazilians are funny. Cause they're, uh, you know, that's like a plastic surgery capital of the world. You and yeah, and it's crazy. It's all over the place. Like you can, you can go buy steroids and you can go walk in and get your boobs done. But if you type in CrossFit steroids into um, into Google, you can go to these Reddit pages where they will tell you, uh, well, you know, when you're going through your bulking phase, you want to take this, and then as you're going more conditioning, getting ready for a for a competition, take this, take this. I mean, there's people out there constantly doing them. Yeah. But, you know, I've got a lot of close friends that are uh, games athletes. And I know pretty much for sure that they don't do it. I mean, out mm -hmm. of just trusting them that they're such good friends that they would be honest with me. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's obvious they're in the games because there's people get busted people all get the caught. time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. So, um, uh, but I do believe for sure there are people that are not doing them. Yeah. And it's more, just, more than there are, there are, that's the way I feel about yeah. it personally. Some people think it's like, eh, you know, there's the people who are like the only way you can qualify for the CrossFit games mm. is to be on drugs. Here's and the, here's the, I, I think the majority are clean. Here's the funniest part of it. That every games athlete that I do talk to accuses someone else. <laughs> Really? <laughs> like they're always like, they're always suspicious of someone else or when their years are over, you know, when they were in the games and they're out of the games, they're like, Oh, that guy, he was. And I mean, everyone. And, uh, I've heard people that I know have used accuse other people. And I'm like, wait. And I don't say, well, I know you have. And I'm like, here you are glass house pointing the finger <laughs> Like you've never done it. And we're, and these aren't like everybody out there right now is probably going, is it this guy? Is it that you wouldn't even know who some of these people are because they were like there and gone or whatever it was. Yeah. But I'm just saying, or, you know, and I think there's a lot of that people have probably come from bodybuilding or weightlifting or football backgrounds or whatever it was where they might've used them back in the day too. Yeah. You know, like I remember uh, Dan Nitro, the, 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 the dude from the gladiators, we had him on the show. Yeah. And I think he qualified in the Masters one year. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, he had a history of using steroids. So, like, you build up your muscles doing that, and then you sustain it, or maybe not sustain it, but your muscles now have this ability. Memory, yeah. Will, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of so, course. And that's, that's always been my kind of, like, I guess, sticking point with it. Because I, I, like Ricky, for instance. Yeah. Uh, I was I was having a online conversation with someone about uh, I'm I'm actually a, a kind of a fan of Ricky uh, I'm I'm friends with his uh, brother his Ben and uh, did grid with Ben uh -huh. um, and we were Bo both of them both of them did get busted yeah. for the same drug right yes correct I yeah. uh, just, I, I I think I think so yeah. I do not know for certain I I haven't looked into any of it enough to know the full story I do know that they both did uh, failed drug tests right. and, um, not sure for what the substances were, what they do. Um, but I'm excited for Ricky, um, to, to be reinstated. Yeah. Um, 2020, someone, 2021, well, he comes back. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and someone said, well, pretty much what you brought up. Don't you think because he used these performance enhancing drugs that it, it pushed his abilities to a level that he, probably couldn't have obtained naturally and 
even though he may be clean from those drugs, that there may still be some, and there's some great studies out there that show that that's very much the case, that there is this, once you reach a certain level, it's easier to reach that level sure. again. Right. Uh, rather than someone who hasn't reached that level to get up to it uh, naturally. So I, he may still have an advantage, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, the, the work you have to, you have to put work in, you have, you can, you have to get used to your heart rate being at a certain beats per minute and, and not being able to slow down. You have to be able to, you know, put in the miles to be able to run at a certain pace. And yes, can that be a little easier with performance enhancing drugs, but, and he will have this residual advantage, but he's still going to have to put in the work. And, and at this point, I think uh, I'm, I'm just excited to see someone challenge, you know, but I've seen, race. I've seen studies that like the hundred meter dash and track and field, like um, using steroids can, can bring your town, your time down three tenths of a second. And that, that can take you from being like an average, not like a top college sprinter to the Olympics, three tenths yeah. of a second. If you're running a 10 one and the next thing you know, you're running like nine, eight, uh, you're going, you're the fastest in yeah. the world. And, and that's, that's a lot. So, so I see the argument there. And I also look, if I was him and the way this is going, and, and I want to be the best in the world and I have used before and I like, I don't know if he's sorry or what his situation is. I've tried to have him on the show. I was in Wollongong in Australia and we were scheduled to do the show and then he called it off. I think he was afraid of having this discussion, which I would have. And then I've sent him some messages lately saying, dude, come on, because he created all that controversy when he was like, I'm coming for you, cunt, when he said that, <laughs> which I, I spent a lot of time in Australia, so I Good. get it. I get yes. it. It's not. It's That's not. like, bro. It is like, bro. It's the I'm only. for you, bro. It's the only place where mate and cunt are interchangeable. Like, you're yes. like, did you just call me? But at the same time, somebody could want to fight you. Like, mate, I'm going to kick your fucking ass, mate. Yeah. And you're like, but I'm your mate. So. Yes. So when you say, oh, he's a funny cunt, you know, like I've had that a million times. Oh, mate, you're a funny cunt. So. It's not as harsh a word there, and I don't care about semantics anyways. It's the last yeah. thing I care about. We have bigger problems in this world. But it was hilarious, and I love a great shit talker. So I was like, this is awesome. This brings – people are so upset. And I was like, this brings – like, this is what you want. Yeah, you want I, like, I, I like the shit talking too. But like, if I were him and I wanted to win, I'd be loading up on steroids like crazy <laughs> right now. <laughs> Like I'd be, I'd be injecting it into my urethra. I would, because you're not getting tested. I, is that true? Well, I, I figured you'd get more tested. Possibly. I don't know. I could be wrong. And if he is getting tested, that's great. Cause then he is, you know, it's like an even playing field. Like yeah. when Hunter McIntyre was trying to get into the games, I was like, Hunter, you could use all the steroids you want because you've never been a games athlete so they're not going to test you until the games yeah. like until you get in so you can stop like you know eight weeks before whatever you have to i don't know what yeah. if, if you're not in the testing pool you ain't getting tested right so so why can't these guys come out of no like that that fucking the dude from was it turkey or uh who, um i call him leftover sandwich of itch yeah yes thank Left you this, that's actually really Yes. Leftover sandwich of itch. He, yep. I know what you're talking about. I was like, when I saw him qualify for the games, I was like, watch out. This guy not only is going to beat everybody, he's going to beat everybody up. Like he's going to, he's going to drop the bar, come over and punch you in the face. Cause and he has so out. much steroids in him. And sure enough, <laughs> sure enough. He just, wasn't it like a list of shit? Yeah. too? <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think his response was like, fuck you CrossFit. <laughs> He's like, yes, I did it. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> which, <That's laughs> awesome. which is great because I've always said CrossFit should be like bodybuilding. There's a natural division and there is a, uh, a you know, a, a, you know, performance enhancing division. Still there. Yeah. You were frozen for a second and it was yeah, with sorry. your, with your eyes shut. It was hysterical. Ah, damn it. Um, but yeah, you were saying, uh, yeah. Leftover sandwich of uh, I want, I want a natural division. 
and a PED division. I want I want them to like do whatever they can. I like the Avengers. I want to see superheroes. Mm. But I also yeah. like the fact that people are going there's a level playing field where and maybe like, that's what the grid league is. Yeah. <laughs> That's where all the doped up people yeah. go. Hey, this year we're going to be doing flying muscle ups <laughs> to a backflip. Yeah, man. If you're if you're not in the testing pool, which is yeah, pretty crazy. They can you can take all the drugs you want and and just kind of how many how many games did you do? I've done uh, four. How many as team and how many individual? Three team, one individual. How many times were you tested? Uh, I've been in the testing pool since like 2013 or 14. And they I've just been get, test. They, I've been tested a lot. Okay. I've been probably tested 15 times. Oh, wow. Maybe give or take, give or take a couple. So, you know, figure, um, you know, two times at the games I, we podiumed, um, and every time to get to the games, we podiumed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had some randos. Um, yeah. We're, yeah, that's wild. We'll just show up to your house and it's like go time. Um, but, uh, you know, they're definitely testing. Like if you're, if you're winning, you're getting tested. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's another reason. One, because I'm, I'm good friends with pretty much – all of the people who go to the games mm-hmm. um, and cause you're, I mean, you're competing against each other all the time. So like you get, you get close with them, you train with them, you you're hanging out with them for days on end. And I've never really seen any really like, or even really been super suspicious of anyone. The before. funny thing is that um, most, people o- are getting tested. most often it's women that get caught. That's what I was going to say earlier. The most of the people that I I've heard of or know of who have tested positive, it's been it's been way more women. Yeah, it's, that's weird. I would think something women would just want to stay away from completely. And uh, yeah. I'm amazed that they do it. It seems that for it I could it could be just like lumping a lot of these up into a couple instances instances that I've been familiar with and it's the women that I know who've tested positive, uh, the ones of them that I have somewhat of a personal relationship with. It seems that there was some maybe male outside of CrossFit influencing eh, interesting. their, um, them taking it. Cause one, I don't think if you're not in the CrossFit culture, yeah, you're like, take drugs yeah like, it's rampant but you're like yeah yo we it's like we we can't do that in what we do um and we get tested and um like i said i don't want to like put that over all the ladies who've tested positive but it does seem like there's usually some sort of male figure yeah yeah um, well, well that's kind of that's kind of how it is in the olympics too you yeah. know whenever they catch these girls they always have this like coach who's like this strong male figure who like has yeah. something to do with their you know, like, Hey, I can, you know, you need to do this. And it, yeah. it's weird. It's, mm-hmm. it's really weird. All right. We interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast to tell you about the greatest food that's ever been eaten. It's called eat the 80, eat the 80, eat, eat the 80. I eat the 80. When they send it to me, I make all my friends eat it too. It's the best. Wouldn't it be funny if that was the commercial? No. Because I can't talk to you about this without telling you. I am going to make a claim, and I will do it on the show. I dare anybody to send me your meal, you know, thing that you send, your meal delivery service. Send it to me. Send me a message. I will do a blind taste test. I am an honest person, and I guarantee Eat the 80 beats all of you. No one will beat it. It's the best tasting food out there. Not only is it best, best tasting, it's super healthy. Every time I eat it, I don't believe that it's, I think this is too good to be true. Then I look at the ingredients. It's like whatever the food is, if it's like meat and a vegetable and, you know, potato, whatever it is, it'll go. And then I'll look at the, what else it is. And it's like salt, pepper, vinegar, um, olive oil. And like, come on, what else is in there? There's sugar. There's, there's, you know, 
some kind of syrup or nope that's it it all the ingredients are so healthy they their their meat is ethically sourced um they have uh they have different meals every single week they change the menu so check out the menu because it's all different and i just i don't even care anymore I don't pick my favorites. I just let them randomly, like I randomly pick because all of them end up being good. Every single one of them. I have not had a bad one. I'm not, I'm not joking. Some I like better than others. The chicken dumplings is the best thing you'll ever eat. And it's gluten free. I don't know how they do that. Um, here's the deal. You order it. The boxes are um, delivered via two day shipping to ensure freshness. And they arrive on either Tuesday or Wednesday, the week after you order. Okay. If you live in Gainesville, Florida, uh, they hand deliver them on Monday. Uh, everything in the box is recyclable. So you get this like cold box and then you can recycle it. And it, look, the, the bottom line is they're so tasty, but they will cater to you if you're paleo, you're keto, you're whole 30, you're vegan, whatever you are, they have meals for you and they will take care of you. You also have to know that their kitchen was clean before COVID. Now it's super clean. Like they are the cleanest kitchen. They really, really, really upped their game and made sure that they're, you know, this is it. And look, you work out all the time. You don't have time to be cooking. I hate cooking and cleaning. And I'm cleaning a lot right now. You don't clean after this. You just throw out whatever the container is that comes in. Pop in the microwave. It takes two minutes. You eat this thing. It's a delicious meal. I told you how good it is. And I'm not joking. This chef deserves a Michelin star. Um, I want to hug the guy when I finally meet him. Uh, and I hope to meet him because I love it. Here's the other thing. They take care of trainers. Trainers, if you have your clients eating Eat the 80, then you're going to get 10% off. So, like, the more clients you have, the more, and the next thing you know, you're getting free food. So, uh, take care of your clients. Take care of yourself. Go to info at eatthe80.com. Info at eatthe80.com. And that is just if you want to get in the trainer program. If you want Eat the 80, just go to eatthe80.com. Check out the menu. Don't even worry. Just order, 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 and you are going to love Eat the 80. I promise. It's E-A-T-T-H-E 80.com. That's E-A-T-T-H-E 80.com. Um, I have only been drug tested once in my life when I was running track, and uh, uh, I remember I smoked weed the night before, and I was like having panic attacks that they were going to find weed in my system and kick me off the team. And that was my big fear. I was like, oh, no, I smoked weed. And it's like weed has like the opposite effect. <laughs> like, weed makes you slower. Yeah, and... I, had a, I had a piss test the day after I smoked some weed in college. Yeah, um, I've been a cannabis user for a very long time. And, um, yeah, that it was uh, I was like, well, it was, I was bound to bound to catch me or yeah, something like yeah. and. They must not have been testing. Yeah, they didn't test. I don't think they do in sports. I don't think it's a performance enhancing drug. I've heard the NBA that all those dudes smoke weed and yeah. that it's like not even, um, it's not like a banned substance or something. And they're yeah. trying it used to be in the NFL. Yeah, they're trying to get the, they're trying to get it to where like how CrossFit has it, um, where the threshold is just based, it's so high yeah. um, that it's almost impossible to test as positive right because you would literally have to be like stoned out of your mind out on the competition floor to even you know it's hot well i mean it's it's a weird weird thing because i know like a lot of football players and stuff need it for pain management and the fact that it is illegal is just it's bull that's like saying alcohol is illegal um yeah. it should be legal but then you have the problem the federal state and the whole that bullshit but um I wonder they're, if they they're coming a long way on it. I wonder if they're checking for psychedelics at all. Yeah, well, you can't test for can't test for LSD. You can't test for mushrooms. Yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I. So I, I doubt it. I heard and, Rogan talking about how a lot of the fighters microdose on mushrooms. Yeah. And it's, I. And that's it's performance enhancing. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if like if down the road they start to, you know find ways, you know, to, I don't, I, I'm not a, a totally sure exactly how those uh, substances work and, and what type of metabolites or um, 
or things that are left in the the blood or urine that you'd be able to um, trace. Um, have you but, ever tried? Have you ever tried mushrooms? Yeah, quite quite a bit. And um, actually, I was going to tell you a story earlier. Uh, Jenny and I tried ayahuasca for oh, the really? first time not long ago, and during my little vision quest, I met. Well, I was introduced to my child um, star is what they said. This is your child star. It wasn't in body. It was just like a shining ball of light. The people who introduced me to star were in body. Um, and they introduced me to my child star. And get this, a year to the date that I had that vision is when we found out we were pregnant. Wow. Trippy. Are you naming your kid star? We are. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, so I, the ayahuasca, a couple things. One, did you, you didn't do it here. Did you go to like Peru or something yeah, to do it? We were, we we're in, we we're in the jungle in Peru. Yes. So you went was, to the real place. Yes. It was wild. Okay. So I have a buddy, Shane Moss, who is a comedian who all his shows are on psychedelics. He does a whole entire comedy show. Cause he's like an, a self proclaimed expert because he's done it more than anyone. <laughs> and he was talking to me about ayahuasca and he was like, he's like, just do DMT. He's like, don't do ayahuasca because yeah. the active ingredient in ayahuasca is DMT. But along with the DMT and ayahuasca, you're getting all this like toxins Violent. that are going to make you purge like your body. Yeah. So you were just puking it. It's, it was one of the most, it's weird because it was the most horrific, awful thing I've ever done in my life, Ugh. but the best. Oh, good. The then you'll be, time. you'll be ready for children. It was like one to one. It was so weird. Yeah. Like it's children. Pure, pure bliss at times. <laughs> it was like, but then pure hell too. And, and that's where I've arrived to. If anyone is interested in like experimenting with psychedelics that, because and you you people speak so highly of the ayahuasca experience because it is very life changing, but I think there's better ways of doing it without being so violently ill. Mm -hmm. You know, like and your friend is probably right. Like you, you're you may be better off just trying DMT. Not that I'm recommending anyone try DMT, um, and and not and just get in and out and not be sick all all night and yeah. be shitting uncontrollably and throwing up this is how bad it was i would try to make myself throw up mm -hmm. just for like almost i don't want to say pleasure but like for some form of to make the experience better because i was in such a horrible like hellish experience that i would just try to go make myself throw up just to get out of that experience and try to get into some form of grounded reality. Right. So I would just go try to make myself throw up to get like almost out of my vision and like come back down to earth for a hot second. It was so, so it, they're, they're coinciding at the same time. It's not like you get the sickness, then you get the trip. It's like, they're kind of happening at the same time. To a degree. There was definitely like, there were some, times that were very pleasurable that I wasn't purging. It was pretty much like for the most, there was a little crossover. Um, like I was still having some in good visions, uh, while being not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the, for the most part, once I started to feel bad, uh, and, and like the purging started to happen, the trip was, it was awful. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was it was hell. It was, it was what I would imagine hell would be like if I went back. Okay. So I've had that just from eating pod cookies. <laughs> Where I, <laughs> I know what you're talking I've, about. I've greened out that like, I literally thought it was the worst. <laughs> like it opened doors that haven't it's, closed. It's that times fucking 10. Oh, see, I, I, I can't. It's, I it's can't, awful. I wouldn't take, and, I would never take that chance. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And that's why I tell, honestly, that's where I'm at with it. it. We cut it short. Um, we were supposed to do five ceremonies. We did two and I was like, well, not me. We all three were like, let's, 
Who else went with you? Your wife, your wife and who else? My wife and my uh, buddy, Matthew Bickle is his name. Okay. And all three Um, of you were like, okay, okay, we could tap out. (laughs) Yeah. We're we're like, you guys want to get get out of here? Go check out Machu Picchu. I'm I'm, I'm not going to call you a pussy. Don't call me. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I got mad respect for anyone who's done that stuff, dude. It's. It's out there. We did, um, did. Did you did you feel ashamed when you told the shaman like ah, I think we're gonna? No, dude. I was so. It was literally. It was so. It was so terrifying. I, I didn't care if I had to break out of there to yeah. like. I I had, we had no problems telling him, like he acted disappointed. And he really wanted us to stay, and we're like, <laughs> no. Or was it's, he? We, or was I, he like, oh, maybe I made that one too potent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like this little guy no. that just stirs it up and he's like, oh, because that's what happened with my pot cookie. The girls who made it were like, as soon as I looked at them, like I was having a good time this one time in Australia and I'm like partying and eating and blah, blah, blah. And I had eaten this whole and I ate half the cookie. And then I was like, yeah, give me the other half. They're like, don't do it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. And I ate the other half. Yeah, it's like, you know, famous last words. And then I got up to walk to the kitchen to get something and it hit me and I turned around and I just looked at them. And I went, make it stop. <laughs> oh, no. And they, they didn't say anything. They just looked at each other. And the look they gave each other was like, oh, no, we've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, did you measure correctly? And I can, like, hear this in my head. You know, like, they're like, I think, oh, God, I think we made too strong of a batch. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean too strong of a batch? And, in there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's an awful, 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 like time stands still, you know, it feels like every minute is an hour. My clock actually stopped. My watch stopped for what felt like, and this is again, why I was like, I would make myself throw up just to see if I could pass time, just to see if time even still was like linear and was like, and I would experience even a second or a minute. And I'd look at my watch it was 10 20 and then I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go throw up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go try to shit and I'm going to come back to my bed and look at my watch. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it says like 10 25, 10 right. 30. Right. And it stayed 10 20. I, it felt like, you know how people will be like, it felt like an eternity or years, but it legitimately felt like a couple hours that my, my watch stayed still at 10 20 there must be and it was one of the most horrific moments of my life there must be something in that i'm going to research that because rogan talked about how when you eat marijuana when you eat thc it metabolizes different and it has a psychedelic effect and so i can only relate to that like i've never i've never dabbled in acid uh, psilocybin or dmt but you know i've eaten enough pot not a lot but just enough times and had horrific experiences and that's exactly what happened. The same thing. I checked my watch a million times because I just wanted to know, okay, like if I get to eight hours, this thing's going to be over. You know, like it's not going to last longer than eight hours. Yeah. And, and I you was, know, you're going to be sober. Like yeah. that's what I always tell myself whenever I'm in those experiences is like, I'm going to be sober by morning. I'm going to be sober. Yeah. But here's what but, happened to me. One time I thought, I think the first time it really happened, I went, oh no. I've gone crazy and this is, this is how it happens. Like those people you see on the street in Venice that are like living on the boardwalk. They you think di- like you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to like break. Yeah. Like I'm you're like, going to have, have some sort of lifelong psychosis. Yeah. For because sure. no one ever asks them. No one ever goes up to them and says, Hey, how'd you get like this? You know, you just, <laughs> you're just like, stay away from that guy. He's going whoop potato, you know, like just, I'm going to avoid him. He's, he's got uh-huh. his belt off and he's whipping the ground. And then I'm like, maybe if I went up to him and I'd be like, Hey dude, how did you end up like this? He'd be like, well, one time I went to Australia and they gave me a pot cookie. And I was like, no, no! So, <laughs> so, so I was like, fuck, I'm, and I was sad. I was like, I've gone crazy. Like my whole life, I just threw it away. And now, and then I was talking to Dr. Drew about it and he's like, there are cases of people with like schizophrenia induced from and all the marijuana people are going to get mad at me now because they're like, it's the safest drug in the world. And I'm like, really? Let me shove a pot cookie in your face right now and watch you. They're like, I'll eat 12 of them. Yeah. Yeah, But but I think there are elements of like, 
it can it it can flip a switch. Yeah, I know. I know of some people who who are in some rough places now because of um, whether it be accidental or just um, being abusive with with psychedelics that have drove themselves into um, some long term psychosis and and. For one of them, I don't know super personally. I just a friend of a friend, and and like I don't think she's doing too well. That's sad. Day. I'm so I'm sorry to hear that. Um, um, again, like I said, not well. Still, you can be sorry for someone, but I again, I don't personally know this person. It was a um, an accident where that someone was basically mixing up bottles of acid, uh, and um, and uh, there was a concentrated like dose in. Uh, like a vodka bottle in a fridge that they were um, basically distributing to other bottles. And there was say 300 hits of acid maybe oh, diluted in this bottle. And I think two girls, two girls, yeah, it was two girls were drinking on the bottle and one of them, one of them came out okay. And the other one, not so much, but yep. definitely not something to mess around with. So um I'm not trying to like, even though I've said that I've no, I know you're not glamorizing it, but I think I, you know, I've listened to enough people talk about it that if it's done under the right situation and circumstance, it's like anything, you know, like if you're in control and, but there's inherent risks in everything. I, I had an ex-girlfriend who did 24 hits of ecstasy once. And yeah. I don't know if that's a, who's crazy or me for dating her or her for doing <laughs> it. But you know what? She recently, uh, she's a nice girl and everything, but she recently, like in the last year, had a couple brain aneurysms. And this is like years wow. later, but I wonder, I wonder if that ever had anything to do with it. You yeah. Know, you know, it was um, probably 15 years before that she did the 24 hits of ecstasy, but that can't be good. <laughs> yeah. And that's honestly, I've, I've had a lot of fun in my younger years and I've tried a lot of, you know, cool things, but that's kind of where I'm, I'm at the, at my point in my life. It's just like, it, is it really worth, you know, worth it? And well, let and me, honestly, let, I, me, let me ask you this. Cause I heard, uh, again, on Rogan Graham Hancock talking about the psilocybin and the DMT that basically if you go there, a lot of times it can uh, take away a fear of death because you're yeah, almost, I would, Oh, for sure. And I would have to totally agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, honestly, I've had, I had a little bout with, I had a little run in with death when I was younger, a couple actually, but only one where I had a full on my, I, w I left my body oh, God. and I could see, I got hit by a jet ski in the Ozarks. Um, and it jacked me up really good, but I got literally, e I didn't even feel it. I got ejected out of my body and I watched like the rest of it happen from what felt like almost a hundred feet above. And I could hear my friends crying. I could hear people yelling from like houses and I could see it. I, I could literally see I was a 360 degree panoramic awareness that was just like slowly moving upward further and further away from this accident. I didn't like meet any angelic beings or like go to, you know, some beauty, but that's when I learned that, and I didn't at the, this time in my life, I wasn't really familiar with what, what is spirit, what is soul, what is consciousness, um, what are these things? I didn't really have those questions, but that's when I first learned that we are not attached to our bodies and we exist beyond them. Um, so like at a pretty young age, I, I had that figured out, um, which I guess is, is, it wasn't necessarily comforting, because I didn't have enough questions behind it to like really go digging around. And, and I was like 13 years old. I didn't really, right. really care about what happened if I died. Um, but as I've gotten older, I have gotten more curious and, um, and definitely that ayahuasca experience where I, I don't really know what happened. I don't know what I experienced. I don't know if it was demonic. I don't know if it was real. I don't know if it was hallucination. But I can tell you my experience about it. It was the realest thing I've ever experienced in my life. It was more, more real. The, how vivid it was was more real than reality, it, like as I know it right now. 
which was kind of a bummer. Mm. Like once you got done with the trip, cause you're like, Oh shit. I just experienced life. Like I've never experienced it. I just experienced consciousness and, and, and this vividness and these senses, like I've never experienced, like, rather than having five senses, you feel like you have a million senses. And rather than having like, you know, 2020 vision, you feel like you have 4k TV vision and everything is so bright and luminescent. And, and I'm, and I'm meeting with people and they're aware of me and I'm aware of them and we're communicating with one another. And I'm walking around this beautiful, like land that seemed like it's been carved out of crystals and and uh so being ejected out of my body and being um able to i don't know if like because you're able to kind of move back and forth from your vision to your physical body like i could come back to my body and listen to my buddy next to me puking or i could just close my eyes and go wherever i was i don't know where i was um but based off of my experience this one-to-one I felt like I was either, it, and after I kind of keep thinking about it, I feel like I was like, what? I think there may be like layers and levels um, to darkness and light. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe some people will know it as heaven and hell um, or um, just different levels of existence, even um, maybe just in, in two different polarities. But uh, I, I feel like I experienced a little sliver of hell and like a, not quite heaven or hell, but like I got to go like if um, if this is where we are right now mm-hmm. and then, you know, there's a, another layer to this side and another layer to this side and then there's like another layer beyond that. I, I think I got to go to like the next level on both sides and I got a little taste of what kind of heaven could be and what hell could be. And um, it definitely makes me really excited for what it could be. And definitely makes me not want to, like, if there's even a chance that hell is real and, and it could have, it could be like what I experienced. Yeah. There's no fucking way. You want to go? I, <laughs> am, I do not want to go there. Yeah. It was the worst, awful. It was horrific. And you're was like, was it horrific because you were purging or just in your? No, fuck no. See it that? That's that. That's my fear of taking something like DMT because I don't want to take that chance of going there. Like, there's enough horrible things in your life from like deaths to heartbreak to just horrible things that I don't, I want to avoid that as much as possible. And I'm like, Oh fuck. It could exist in the afterlife too. Fuck. Like that's, that's terrifying. Like that's just, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm staying away from that, bro. I'm doing everything that I can to like, to find a, to get myself to the cool place that I went. Well, that was beautiful and made of crystals and, and everyone was beautiful. I'll give you a good book to read. There's a book written by, I believe his name is Jeffrey Long, Dr. Jeffrey Long. And I forget, I think I saw him on Oprah or something. And this guy wrote, uh, he started a website years ago about near-death experiences. And yeah. people that had had them, like yourself, um, would, he compiled them. And he just wanted to start doing research on them. So he went all over the world finding all these people with these near-death experiences and he found these commonalities between them all. And yeah. I, I don't think the guy's a religious guy, but he, after like writing the book, he was like, I have become a bit spiritual. I think I could be wrong. I forget. I read the book so long ago, but there were yeah. these eight commonalities. And one of them was like meeting up with your relatives. One of them was seeing a light, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. There yeah. was like a light. Um, one of them was one of the bad things about it was, he said that people that commit suicide have really horrible um, near-death experiences. And there was a lot that could go into this. It could be, is there DMT released? Because when you die, DMT is released in your brain. Yeah. Um, but it was really, really interesting. And they found that like, if they went to like the middle of the, you know, the fucking Africa and found someone that's never spoken to society or anything like Western society... 
and had never had any interaction, but they had a near death experience. Had their experiences similar experience. were similar. So it wasn't yeah. like, Oh, I heard this. So this is what I felt or yeah. thought when it was happening. I they, may have read this book where they're like blind people's yep, testimony yep, yep, as well. Yep. Yep. Same where thing. like people blind since birth See would this, have the same vision visual would have visual experiences very similar to others. Yeah. People so, yeah, and stuff like that. Like, and great. So I had a really radical experience like eight years ago that kind of like that really full on straightened me out. And it, for me personally, it brought, it let, it led me to Christ. And that's just where, that's what I've been camping in ever since. Yep. Um, and, um, yeah, a lot of these, I've never like met Jesus or anything, Yeah. but I think I've had experiences with some sort of very loving um, thing yeah. that is out there. Um, and it's, uh, and again, because I had such a rat, I, I was one time I was, I was fasting uh, for very long times mm-hmm. and I was exercising very intensely doing very long runs. And I think it prompted a, um, some sort of experience mm-hmm. and, um, in that experience, I, I had these wild visions and, um, and to just summarize it all up, it kind of like it, it led me to a church, like full on visually, like showed me where to go and told me what to do. And as clear as we're talking, like I was understanding this and actually seeing myself visually following through on these like requests, if you will. Um, they felt very demanding, but I felt so loved and comforted, uh, that I, like, it wasn't a, a really scary experience. Right. But, um, it, I, I was like convicted enough that I was like, Oh shit, I need to go. I need to follow through with whatever just happened and whatever just showed me all that stuff. And it's crazy. Like literally my, the next year of my life looked identical to all these visions that I like was worth down like thrusted into my brain it was like someone plugged a usb card into my freaking head and just downloaded a bunch of like like slices of of video of of my life and showed me like what to do and um and that pretty well had me convicted i didn't know really what my beliefs were and what was going on you weren't raised it, religious at all no nah. really no um like where I grow up, there's lots of like Catholic people. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know, my parents never like talked to me about God or anything or like took me to church or anything. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. Uh, I was raised Catholic, like taken to church every Sunday of my life. And I would call myself, I'd say I'm agnostic now. I went atheist and then I started, uh, I just believe that like there's something, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in any of the Christian or any of the books, any, any, uh, anything from the, you know, Islam to Christian. I like, I like Buddhism, but I believe it's just a book. Christianity, same. They're all the same book. They're a guide to life. And all of them are, um, to me and all the research I've done and all the reading I've done, they're just, um, a template for life. And, uh, it seems all good. And I don't have any issue with it. And I think yeah. it's, it, I think it's a really good template, but like when it comes to like the factual accuracy and anything of it all, it's all like horse shit to me. And then because of stuff <laughs> like the council of Nicaea, where they just get, you know, all these guys, anything that's man-made can be used to manipulate. Like, you know, they write text and they go, Hey, I wrote this text cause I want you to do this, or I want you to do that. And I want to control people like this or control people like that. But like, so you can take good and bad from it. There's good stuff in it. Like if you followed the Bible, literally, there was a great book I read called, uh, rescuing the scriptures from the fundamentalists. And it was like, if we're going to take the scriptures literally and follow them, Uh, you know, there's parts of it that say all these really good things to do, but then there's like lot, like let the, you know, lot had sex with his daughters so that the people would, uh, you know, like all this crazy shit happens and there's killing of the firstborn and there's all, so like, you can't take it literally. And, um, but as far as like, uh, you got to pull excerpts. Yeah. I've heard, um, 
someone say when you start to take it uh, as a dictation rather than a connotation, um, you start to have problems. Um, so, and the connotations, I don't know if you've ever read through like um, a Bible with connotations um, it, or any scripture for that matter with connotations. And it kind of will cover maybe the symbolic nature of a certain passage or a um, take a look at what it was in the Hebrew versus the Greek. Sure, sure. And, um, and it would just kind of extrapolate on a certain passage. It wouldn't say like this path, you know, well, rather that, than a that was the ca- would be- that was the Catholic church. You go to church every Sunday, the guy reads the gospel and then he gives his sermon, which is his interpretation of it. And he would try to say it was like his weekly speech. And I was like, hey, this, you know, and he was like, hey, this says to do this. And you've got a friend that's sick and you should go visit them in the hospital. And, you know, because it's not all about you. And you're like, wow, that makes so much sense. And I was like, that's really nice thing. And that's really good. Now, I'm not going to and I'm going to try to guide myself with this. I'm not going to believe that this really ever happened historically because it happened thousands of years ago. And we have so much information on the Internet now that people actually see and we don't even believe. And it's yeah. wrong or, in you know, not factual. And then I'd find out that that priest like raped for little kids. <laughs> and I was like, OK, maybe I shouldn't listen to I'm him out. at all. Yeah. And it's like. You got to take the good and the bad and you or take the good and discard the bad. And it's your interpretation. I don't know if you heard one of my recent episodes. I had on a guy named Johnny Beal that I found because uh, I feel like I am. uh, I don't know what I am. I'm like a connector in this business. I bring people together and I know a lot of CrossFit gyms are closed right now. I went on to Facebook. I said, hey, uh, what's your status right now? And a lot of people wrote in, some are 25% open, some are 50%, some are 100, some are out in the parking lot, some are completely closed. Then I said, how many people in your gym have gotten COVID? And a lot of gyms answered that they had had a few cases of members of their gym, not that they got it at the gym or whatever it was. However, there were a couple cases. So I want your gyms open. I want them at 100%. I want the gym owners making money. I want CrossFit to prosper. I want CrossFit to continue. And I want all of you people out there to be able to work out at your gyms, see your friends, hang out. The way you're going to do it, Purify. Purify is the best way to keep your gym open or to reopen your gym. That's right. Purify. It's P-U-R-I-F-L-Y dot com. I have talked with Johnny Beal, the owner of this place, extensively. Owned a cleaning business, does hospitals, was being called by all these hospitals because they did such a good job of cleaning up and making sure the virus is not existent there. And he said, hey, we should move over into gyms. They did that. It's very simple. They have a way. They use a chemical called BioEsque. It's not like a bad chemical. There's bad chemical. Bleach is bad. A lot of you using bleach. Stop using that. You're about health. That is not healthy for your clients. Get this stuff. Bioesque. Uh, Johnny has a, a book that will tell you exactly. I don't read stuff like this, but I did because I found it interesting. He's going to tell you how to reopen your gym. He's got this gun. I love this gun. We use it in our home now to clean, uh, especially out in my gym because uh, I have friends over that use my gym and I want to clean up after them. Spray it down. Takes four minutes. It is EPA certified to kill cars of uh, cars. Yeah, kills cars. No, kills SARS CoV 2 in four minutes. That's the coronavirus for those of you that live in a cave and didn't know. Yeah. So it kills the coronavirus. Uh, so like basically you can end a class, spray down, doesn't leave any residue or anything. You don't have to wipe up. You just spray. Boom. Four minutes later, you're ready to let the next class in. You're clean, ready to go. And, uh, and it's great. Uh, no PPE required. You just hold this thing, this gun, shoot it. It's so much fun. I use it all the time. Um, and, uh, I just want to spray people with it. Like, go away, you virus. You have the coronavirus. Uh, but I don't. Um, but go back and listen to the episode where I talk to him because he, he'll give you all the science on it and everything. And it's wonderful. Um, but here's the deal. If you want to get it, uh, we don't want using those harsh based bleach based chemicals. This is safe, fast and effective. And they are the leader 
in disinfecting services to reopen your fitness centers safely and confidently. They're killing it too. So I want you guys open. They don't need you, but I want you to be open. Go to purifly.com. That's P U R I F L Y, purifly.com uh, slash reopen my gym. Reopen my gym. Purifly.com slash reopen my gym. Do you need me to spell it? I'll spell it. P U R I F L Y.com slash R E O P E N M Y G Y M. I didn't spell com. It's C O. Go clean your gym. And I always say, and this is, this is, I love this podcast because it's different than anyone we've ever done. Um, that I look at the universe the way my dog looks at my MacBook. He will never comprehend it. He will no. never understand. I don't even understand how it works, but probably if I went to school for it and I study, I could understand the chips and the way this is, you know, the, the coding and everything, how it works. I could figure it out. My brain is capable. My dog's brain is not physically capable of understanding that. I believe that's how we are with the universe. Mm -hmm. We are not physically capable of understanding how the universe works, nor will we. I mean, maybe someday we'll evolve into it with our artificial intelligence or something that we yeah. will eventually be able to go, oh, this and this and connect the dots. And this is why we do this. And we do probably get closer and closer to that. But I still think we're so far away that to yeah, try sure. to explain it is almost childish is like, yeah, and it's it just shows, I guess, how far away we really are, because you do have so many people, right, saying this is true. This is true. This is the way this is the way, you know, and this is this is how you this is how you go to heaven this is how you experience eternal bliss this is how you uh absolve into nothingness um right everyone's teaching something else and and saying something different and some of a lot of things are similar too um but yeah it's it's nobody can really agree on on anything um you know so but it does definitely make it hard uh, there's for someone there, there's seven billion of us in the world seven billion and nobody knows the fucking <laughs> answer isn't that terrifying that like seven Dude. billion people and not one person can really really tell you what happens after death and to me like that's why i always say like you see crazy people in the street that are like screaming you know like that guy that's like whipping the ground go whoop potato i did see a guy doing that yeah maybe he's the sane one and we're crazy because we're walking around, having Zoom meetings, going to work, making more children, and we're like acting like nothing's happening. Meanwhile, this guy knows. And this guy's like, <laughs> we're fucking, ah, ah, just screaming all the time because he knows what happens after death. And we're like, yeah. why are you screaming? He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that's the, it's, it keeps me up at night. You know, I, yeah, it's, it's I, trippy, dude. Life's a trip, man. And now you're bringing a child into this world. Yeah. And you got to look at that kid. And I mean, there was this moment where I looked at my, both times I looked at my kids like, have I done the right thing? Like bringing you into this crazy, crazy consciousness where you're going to exist wow. and then not exist. And, and like, yeah. you're going to be aware of, which is great. Like to me, that's what it is. I like, I love life and I love consciousness and I love awareness. And to think that I won't maybe be conscious forever is terrifying. It is a little creepy. At least, well, here's, like I said, here's where I'm at with it all. I'm like full 100% bought into, and again, I've had like really weird things happen, like getting hit by a jet ski or, you know, my fasting and running experience or uh, taking ayahuasca or mushrooms or LSD or whatever, like it, it does not seem that to me at least, and I'm totally bought into it that our, our consciousness is uh, a result of like our physical body. 
um, again, because I've been ejected out of it <laughs> and, and realized that like, whoa, holy shit. Like even, uh, I had, I've had actually a, a couple of, I've had three out of body experiences, one of the near death experience, I guess two near death experiences. One of them, I didn't have any like visuals or anything. Um, I just like passed out. And then, um, and then some really wild, uh, psychedelic experiences. And it definitely doesn't seem to me that our consciousness is, is local to our right. actually like belongs to our body. And once our body ceases to exist, then we are no longer, um, uh, conscious, uh, consciousness at all. Like we're not conscious of anything. It just like, like it just fades out or something. Um, and, uh, yeah. It's, can, uh, can, can we pause this for a second right here? Because I want to yeah. ask you, how did you get ejected out of a jet ski? <laughs> I got hit by another jet ski. Okay. So like one of those like fails videos. Yeah. So I got like, I got T-boned by oh. some like three, four seater, huge monster jet ski. Didn't hit your leg? Uh, it hit my side, like in my hip. I couldn't, I was like paralyzed for two weeks. I couldn't move my legs and this massive hematoma from like my armpit to like my knee. My mom had to change Jeez. me and wipe my ass and change my clothes. Oh, and, fuck. um, but, uh, didn't break anything. Um, don't did, have any like long-term damage that I know of. Did you go flying? Break. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, and I like, I got ejected so quickly out of my body that I like was able to watch the tail end of me, like skipping across the water. Wow. Were you, mo and, were you moving and they were moving? Both of you were moving. Yeah. Full throttle. Both of us. Oh my God. And it, they T-boned you. And I got T-boned dude. Oh fuck. People That's don't realize how good. dangerous jet skis are. It's so bad. Those and ATVs. I bet, you know, a handful of like close, acquaintances who have lost their lives on ATVs at least not ATVs maybe it's but I I know friends that have I I've been in ATV accidents I've I've gone I've like f rolled two ATVs where like my body went under them and I was like okay I'm gonna die this is gonna crush it's me it. this and, is it. <laughs> and then two of my friends Nikki Totten and Mike McWilliams when I was kids uh, when we were like young kids like fifth grade or something their parents both bought them like the most hardcore Quad or trikes. This is before quad runners. Those are the worst. They're the worst because they just roll constantly. And my parents are like, "You're not riding a motorcycle or a trike or whatever." And I was like, "Okay, I'm going over to Nikki's." And I would just get on with him and then go die. And uh, <laughs> and it was like we were we were like like twelve and we're riding things that go faster than cars. And let, I mean, they don't, but we were going faster than cars legal through these trails and off jumps and the most dangerous shit in the whole world. And I looking back, I'm like, what the fuck? How crazy were their parents that they were like, here kids, you're 12, take this and see yeah. what you can do with it. Yeah. I too, I'm blown away with some of the shit I got away with. My parents let me do when I was younger. Oh, I look at my kids all the time and I'm like, please don't do anything. I did. Don't do <laughs> anything. <laughs> I did so many dumb things. I remember we used to go on my roof and just jump off. Jump. Like into bushes and shit. Yeah. Weird stuff. Like, yeah. like, like let's see if we can land and stay on our feet. Why? Like Dude. just the experiments you do with your body where you're like, oh, let's so I don't know. So good luck being a parent. Yeah. Thanks, it's a, dude. It's um, a heart attack every day. We'll see um, what happens. So what's going on uh, CrossFit wise? Are you uh, training or anything? Yeah, or? I was, well, dude, I was super stoked for this year. Um, you know, but, and it's cool that we've gone this far without saying the word COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, that usually seems to be like the only thing that people talk about. You know, people yeah. talk about. Um, I'm fortunate. Actually, we have a cool gym culture here where like COVID the last thing that really ever comes. Where up. is your gym? Quincy, Illinois. Okay. And it is like, the place to be like during all this, this mess and yeah. overreaction, like, cause where I'm at right now, like life is just kind of going on. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've had the biggest numbers I've ever had in my gym, the best business we've ever had. Nobody's sick. No, I haven't had one person get sick yet. Classes of 24 people. Uh, we don't wear a mask. We don't social distance since um not a single one of my members has gotten sick and 
our town is for the most part seems to be pretty open. There are some places it seems to be like the bigger you are, mm -hmm. the more compliance you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, right. Like if you go to Sam's club or something like, yeah, they're going to, they have people like at the door, like asking you to wear a mask or something like that. Um, but, um, and then like the smaller, like owned businesses, you know, they don't have any, they, well, some people, if they're like bought in the whole like standard narrative media is sharing with us, um, will, you know, put your mask on or something like that. Um, but, but for the most part, things are going right across the river. They got football going on. I went to a, a derby a couple weeks ago with like thousands of people. I don't think a single person had a mask on. Uh, there's probably 8,000 people there. Wow. Um, and it's like, and it's the exact opposite of what I was in Denver a couple weeks ago too. Um, and I was just like blown away. I'm like, Whoa, yeah, this is, masked up. this is way different than like, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't worn a mask once, like since this started in Quincy yeah. and had any problems. Um, no one's ever like really, well, I shouldn't say that I've had someone tell me like going into certain business, some businesses you go into, they'll ask you to put one on. Um, so I can't say that I haven't been even asked cause I have, um, but it's just the, just culturally, it's completely different here than what it is in Denver. Like Denver, it's like, if you don't have it oh, yeah. when you're walking around, like you would get like, in yeah, trouble. you, you can't go in anywhere in California without it. Where, where are you at? I'm in LA. And if you go in anywhere, oh, LA is probably like the epicenter. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you can't, like, you can't go in a store without it's just. And everybody complies. It's like one of these just like, oh, well, just put your mask on. You go in. Yeah, I mean, I like live I live out in the mountains and we all walk around our neighborhood and talk to each other. And we pretty much act around here as though it doesn't exist because we're outside. We're spread out. You know, there's and, you know, when you're in the UV and all this stuff. And, and yeah. but but, you know we don't go in each other's homes, that kind of thing. Like, you're not like, there's not parties in people's houses and, but we do hang around with friends and, you know, we all meet wow. in the street and, uh, you know, my daughter just went to a dance class in a backyard with a bunch of kids, like all outside, you know, wow. some school. I had, yeah. I had a party, uh, for our non for profit last weekend. Yeah. At a friend's brewery. I, there's 300 people there. Wow. Wow. Like, yeah, I haven't done in, I haven't done stand up comedy. I did one night in Huntington Beach, uh, outdoors. But other than that, I haven't done a show since March tenth. So I've never wow, go, I've never gone a, it, I've never gone a week without performing, and this has been like seven months or whatever. I'm losing my mind. Wow, man. Yeah, I got to get well, back. It, it, you'll have it's you'll have a lot of a lot of content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next time you get that brewery, uh, charity event, call me, I'll do a show. <laughs> Dude, like for yeah, real, yeah. like, um, that's, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there was some like initial panic here. And again, you got to understand where we're at. We're, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Dude. Yeah. Like, um, there's the biggest city near us is St. Louis and that's not even that big. And it's, three hours away, two and a half hours away. Wow. Uh, every, every town outside of Quincy, Illinois is like less than 2000 people. We're surrounded by farmland and, um, and, uh, did you grow up even, there? Yeah. Okay. It's even crazier in Missouri. Like months, I, you might even saw it on TV. I was there. Um, uh, in the Ozarks, I don't like the news was making a huge deal about it. Like oh, Missouri was the, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. first States to open up. Like I was at those, those, uh, those leg parties, <laughs> um, hundreds, hundreds of people. Like it was spring break type yeah. stuff yeah. during like July 4th. And it's just like, yeah, it's crazy just how different it is from state to state or country to country. Um, and I think, I think a lot of people, wild. I think a lot of people do get it. I do. And I think, uh, but I think the people that are affected by it are people with comorbidities, elderly people, yeah. people that would be affected by the flu. And it is more contagious and it is more deadly than the flu. But again, you have to be in those categories. Knock on wood. Yeah. Like I don't want – look, I don't want it and I'm not being an idiot about it. But I'm saying if you're a healthy young individual, 
you can get it, but you're probably not going to really experience it like someone would that has pulmonary fibrosis that's 80 yeah. years old. So, yeah. so, um, I, you know, I've, my opinions change every day on it. I watch one, <laughs> I watch one news story and I'm like, I'm like, oh, this thing's, uh, this thing's all fake and they're embellishing their, but they're overblown. And then I'll watch another one. I'm like, we're all going to die. So, so I've asked, See, maybe like, that's, maybe that helps me too. We haven't, we haven't had like cable TV or like TV pretty much almost since we've been married. Um, keep it that way. You'll so, be, you'll be happier. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So the only, like when I need information on stuff, like I get, I like go, I talk to smarter. I talk to people who are smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to do it. And, uh, but so what's your training yeah. like now? What do you do? Where are you? Oh, yeah, we, we were talking about that, but yeah, 20, 2020, you know, the COVID year I had, I had four sanctionals planned. Uh -huh. Um, I was getting ready to go out to the West coast, uh, classic. And that was like kind of the week that everything shut down. Um, so right then and there, I knew that my year was done. Yeah. Um, it didn't, it, it got worse and worse and worse every, every day and, right. and more panic. And, and so I knew right away that the 2020 year was over. I was going to do, you know, no competitions, no seminars, um, no appearance events, no nothing. Uh, so honestly, we just kind of, I've, I've spent the last eight months just researching pre and postnatal care mm -hmm. and just trying to learn everything I can about, um, pregnant people and babies. And, um, I've taken a bunch of certification courses and just been like keeping my head in the books and just doing all this research. And, um, but after like, once the baby's out, I think is going to start like kind of the get back into some good routines and um, get back into just full-time training and um, but training and, to compete. Yeah. Training yeah. to compete. I wanted to do things individually this year. Um, I'd still like to do some individual stuff. It's kind of been a goal of mine to try to qualify again before mm -hmm. I'm a master's athlete. Mm -hmm. um, How old are you now? 33. Yeah. And, uh, so I'd still like to do maybe a couple team comps with some of my friends and, um, anymore though, I'm not like, I just, I love to compete. I don't have to really even like win. I just like to be competitive and compete. Right. So like, as long as I still look like I belong out on the floor <laughs> and I'm not finishing like last in every event and, and like the, the top men's, you know, elite divisions, then. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue competing. And, um, like I said, I'd like to make it to the games again before I'm a master's athlete and, um, got some other, some other kind of performance goals and such, but I tore my pec a couple weeks ago. Uh, so yeah. been kind of nursing that and getting that, uh, dialed in. I tore my pec, my right pec in 2017, the year, like 38 people. Right, tore right, it. right. I remember and that. And, um, I tore this one in a competition. You have a Theragun? Uh, uh, I do have a Theragun. You don't hit your pecs with it? Dude, I like, I hit my muscles with it and stuff. It's just, um, I, it was doing dips. Yeah. Dips. Um, yeah. Again, that's, like, how, that's how the first time, right? I'm a big guy. Like I'm a, yeah. I have got, I'm probably the largest or the heaviest athlete to ever qualify for the games. I would be willing to bet that. What are you weighing? Um, right. Like right now I'm, probably 235 yeah you're up um there. and uh and i've made big i'll make big cuts but you know i usually as soon as i start stuffing my face with carbs again like i puff right back up to like 230 um but um yeah so you no know, i don't know where i was exactly going but yeah i look forward to training yeah. and, and getting back in into uh competitive well yeah competitive shape and and traveling and hopefully traveling and I, yeah. i'm definitely not going to be i don't think i'll be competing if it's just like online shit like i'm not i don't think i'm down for that like that i want to doesn't seem very fun no nah, like i'm not like i don't need it that much in my life like i'll go do jujitsu or something well, your, um, your Instagram is going to turn from all training videos to, uh, your baby, baby. yeah, it's, yeah. It, you can't help it. 
Yeah, I always was like, I'm going to keep my kids off social media. I don't want the world to know who they are, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, it's every single video. You just love them and you think they're so cute. And they. So I'm looking forward to watching you metamorphosize into this. Like, you'll see, it'll take over your life. Training will be yeah, so Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, it's crazy to me. I'm just like, it's weird knowing that like in – under 24 hours, I'm not going to be the same guy that you. What if, interviewed. what if you just got so into this, uh, podcast that your wife, without you knowing, she was trying to call you, <laughs> but you're on this, check, she had I'll gone to the phone. hospital and she's like, where were you? I just, or to the neighbor's house where she's shooting it into a baby pool. And she's like, our kids swimming around with rubber duckies. And you're on there talking to talking about psychedelics. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious oh, if you're if Star was born and you weren't there because you were on this podcast. This would it would get my ratings up. This is a real <laughs> listen, pretend. <laughs> no. Thanks. Thanks for doing the show at this time. I, if I had known this, I never would have asked you to do it. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm sorry it took so long for us to get it, no, like, get I, it I'm, going, man. I'm glad we did because we had a great conversation. I look forward to uh to seeing you in person and see, meeting the baby someday and maybe on one of my drives across the country or when I'm doing a show in Illinois sometime. I don't know if I'll ever do a show in Quincy, but I'm Dude, in, I'm in if, St. Louis a lot. Get, if you get hungry enough, if not, if places aren't open enough, <laughs> we're in the Midwest. We come, got it going on, come, man. Come, so. to, come to Quincy. I'll ride my jet ski there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, it was awesome. Thanks for doing the show. Anything you want to plug besides your Instagram? Um, man, uh, my wife runs this non for profit called the Dancer Love Foundation. Um, unfortunately, this year we weren't we we're usually able to do upwards of thirty of our charity fundraising events all across the the country and the world. And we do a a, a team marathon event called the Row Raiser, and all the one a hundred percent of the funds go to um, supporting. Um, special needs athletes into getting into uh, fitness gyms. That's stuff. awesome. That's awesome. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we usually raise around a hundred thousand dollars a year. And uh, this year we're only probably going to be able to raise about, you know, $20,000 cause we can't have events, but um, we, well, we had our event, but we're not going to be able to have events sure. ar around, you know, the country. Um so um, if anyone's ever interested to go check out the Dancer Love Foundation, uh, we're doing really, really cool stuff. And um, working with the special needs community has absolutely just kind of changed, changed my heart, um, the way I see myself and the way I see other people and the way I talk to people and the way I love them. And um, I just see how spirited these um, these, yeah, these young men and women with, with – and well, just men and women with special needs – are and how just how yeah how spirited they are how much they love and just how much they show up and uh it's really inspired me and that's kind of why we started it and so if anyone wants to learn more about that you can check it out that's awesome and let me know if you ever need to plug anything for that on the show i will definitely i would love to be involved yeah cool man uh we we had some plan to do out like in la and stuff but obviously everything kind of got canceled but all right. Well, um, well, good luck with the baby. Uh, yeah, tell your yeah. wife, I said, good luck and, uh, let us know. I, I can't wait yeah. to hear uh, how it all goes. And, uh, I'll let you, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a, send you a text, man. Let you I, I would love to know. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so good luck. Uh, you gotta, you got a stressful 24 hours ahead of you, but just, <laughs> just relax. It will all be over and you're going to have the, yeah. I'm, the, the stress is, oh, is, is, uh, is, uh, deleted by the, all the, just the amazing, parts of it i mean just the fact that you got another life coming around yeah, man. um thank so, you so much good luck absolute honor to be on the hey, show thanks and, uh, for being God on again you, man. okay see yeah. ya you do